Kaya pag tinitignan ko siya nagtuturo, yung lesson is only secondary. Kaya I think about his testimony and what a blessing he is to me and to the ministry here to meet many people. So let's all welcome uh, one of our deacons, Brother Philip Ventura, who will be a father of, he will be a uh, senior son. I think he has a junior coming very, very soon. And so I know he is very excited about this, but okay, for now he will be our teacher, okay? So listen, not only with your ears, but with your heart. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Friday school. Uh, and I thank God because uh, God has given me again a chance to be in front of you to discuss you some words, one of the words for my question. As Pastor said, we'll be discussing from the books of Romans, chapter 8, which is 28 to 29. Let us all stand. We will read all together. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 29. It's better we read from our Bible, if we have our Bible. Are you there? Yes. Let us read all together. Ready? Ready? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the whole according to His purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to, to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Let me just uh, read again the first verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his works. Let us pray. Our gracious loving Father, we thank you once again, O Lord, for your wonderful grace and mercy in our lives. We thank you for all your goodness and blessings and all what you are doing, what you have done and continue doing in our lives, O God. We praise and thank you, O God, for all your words that we are going to discuss today. I ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to this study so that we can understand fully your words. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> in our verse, it says, and we know, just uh, what Pastor said earlier, Christians know that when we are going to trials, all will pass. Amen? Because we have a great God in our side. This truth encompasses many areas of our Christian life. In times of victory and in times of trials. So, in times of victory, just like uh, when you pass the exams, healing from sickness, or got a new job, promoted to a higher position, we all have to thank God. And we have to. We should be thanking God. Amen? Because that all comes from Him. And also, if we have trials in life, some sickness, poverty, financial burdens, job loss, or even death of a loved one. For Christians, these are only temporary. Amen? Amen. Because we know, as it says in the verse, and we know that all things work together for good. Sometimes we ask, why this is happening. But we know that all things will work together for good. Amen? Amen. When we are experiencing, experiencing success, this verse reminds us of how we reach the mountain top. Amen? Amen? By the grace of God, of course. By all, by the grace of God. We, are, we experience the mountain top for Christians we experience it because we know that God is on our side. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. When we are going through times of trials, these verses teaches us that our circumstances will work 
will work together ultimately for good. Amen? This will ultimately work for good in our lives as Christians. In your notes, brothers and sisters, in number one, this will, all things for your good means for all his people, for his people. If you have your notes, if you have the blank, in the first blank there is his people. In our verse, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them, to them that love God. Amen? Amen. This means to the believers. To the believers, because who loves God the most? The saints, or us as believers. If we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in our lives, we are. We are the children of God. Amen? Amen. It is important to realize that this verse does not pertain to all people. Sometimes, other unbelievers will claim this also as well. They can claim this in their lives, but not, not as, as we are as Christians. Not as we as Christians. This truth is not for the unsaved. In your first note, in your letter, in your note, this truth is not for the unsaved. Because they cannot have confidence that everything in their lives will ultimately work out for good. For unbelievers, the trials come, what they will do? They will go to their vices, go to the whatever they are committing sins. But for us, where we go to if we have trials? We go first to our God. Amen? Amen. The unsaved person must be given a clear presentation of the gospel rather than assurance that their lives will work together for good. That's why we are going to Bible studies. We have worship like this to encourage unbelievers that Jesus Christ came to this earth to save those which are lost. Amen? It says, to them who are called according to his purpose. This is the believers or the Christians. We are, we are, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the letter B on your note, this truth is not for the backslider. Backslider means one that departs from the Lord or he he came out from, he believed God, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, uh, hindi siya, hindi siya sa, sinapuso na siya ay naniniwala sa Diyos. He doesn't fully trust God. That's the backslider. This verse says, and we know that all things work together for good to them. Just, uh, Take note there, to them that love God. The backslider must be lovingly rebuked and must be made to understand that living in sin will have dire consequences. They have backsliders return to their own ways. That's why we have to encourage them back. We have to rebuke them to return to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Master. Amen? Amen. There are so many dire consequences that I've mentioned earlier. Loss of joy if you are a backslider. You lost, you lost your first love if you backslide to the Lord. Sometimes loss of help, wealth and evil loved ones. And in letter C, this truth is for those who love the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because great is our God. Great is our God. He gives all good things to His children. Amen. So we're through with our number one. Number one is His people. This truth is not for the unsaved. This truth is not for the backslider. But this truth is for those who love the Lord. Amen? Amen. 
And number two of your notes, brothers and sisters, all things work for your good because of His promises. His promise. If we were saved and we love God, we can claim the promise of this verse. Amen? Amen. We can have confidence that the Lord will fulfill it in our lives. In Titus, Titus chapter 1 verse 2, let me just read. In Titus chapter 1 verse 2, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Amen? Amen. God promised that He will give eternal life to His sons and daughters. Amen? Amen. He promised that. Do you believe that? Amen. As believers, we believe that. Because this is our hope. Amen? Amen. His promises are certain because of its outcome. The certainty of its outcome later in your notes. There is certainty or there is assurance. We are sure of what is in our future. We have confidence in our God. And we know it says, God will do what He said He will do. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, I'll just read. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. It says here in the first Kings chapter 8 verse 56, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according, according to all that he promised. Amen? It says that according to all that he promised. At that time he promised Israel to send them to the promised land. That hath not failed one word. Amen? Amen. Of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Amen? Amen? At the time of departing from Egypt, he promised Moses, he promised the people of God that he will be reaching the promised land. Anytime God makes a promise, we can have 100% sure for assurance he will do it. Amen? Mm. Not only 100%, 101% or 1000% that we are sure. There's no faith. Amen? Amen? He never breaks His promises. He promised it to the Israelites. He promised it to the believers. And even He promised it to the one dying beside Him on the cross. Amen? Amen. That He will be with Him in paradise. He promised it because there is a change in its curriculum. In your, let there be in your note a change in its curriculum. There will be adjustment or change of course. As God takes us to the process of conforming to the image of the Son, He has to take us through many steps. You may go through different types of trials, but we can be rest assured that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen? Amen? Ultimately, all things work together for good. Let me just give some examples. In the life of Joseph, you know the life of Joseph in the Old Testament? Amen? He was sold to the... He was sold as a slavery to slavery. He became a slave to Egypt. But afterwards, he became Satan to Pharaoh. Amen? Mm. He became Satan in line to Pharaoh. In the life of Paul as well, he suffered beatings, shipwreck, imprisonment. But he wrote this Romans. Amen? Mm. That's why we got the book of Romans now. 
That's why we have confidence in our God. And let us see in your note, there is conformity as its goal. Conformity as its goal. There is agreement of accord. It says there, to be conformed to the image of His Son. He wants us to be conformed to the, to the image of His Son. Through every hardship, testing, and sudden change in our experience, God has an ultimate goal. Amen? God has an ultimate goal to conform us to His Son. That's why we are here on earth with having trials, or having persecutions. Look at what Jesus experienced when He was on earth. There's nothing compared. Amen? Amen. Nothing compared to what He has experienced when we are what we are experiencing now. He knows exactly what is best for you and me as He allows you to go through trials. In His sovereignty, He, set, he sends you the circumstances that are best suited for you to conform to Christ. Amen? Amen? He cannot send trials to Brother Mike that it comes to me because he is an individual believer. Amen? Amen. He sends a trial to him suited for him. He sends trial to me suited for me and each one of us. Amen? That's why this promise is for the people of God. This promise. <coughs> Whatever God allows you to go through, you can rest assured that He has a purpose for it. Although you may not always understand, you cannot wait that His ways are perfect. That's why number three, this is His purpose. From the block of your notes, His purpose in number three. Let me just read in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. Once the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen? Amen. Our thoughts are just here on earth, but the thoughts of our God is above heavens. In letter A of your notes, brothers and sisters, this for for our filter, our filter. When we are totally committed to God's purpose for our lives, all our plans go through the filter of His purpose, affecting every decision we make. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes when we plan our future, we forget God, but that plan is, that plan will fail, most assuredly, if we will not put God first in our plan. Amen? That's why Christians, we plan because God has planned for our future. Amen? For unbelievers, we plan, of course, as well. But this plan will all go to destruction if it doesn't have God in their lives. They plan for their future to have good houses, good cars. But ultimately, what will happen to them if they lose their life without Christ? Amen? They will go to the everlasting destruction. Remember that even upsetting circumstances that happens to our lives are designed or allowed by God to conform us to Christ. He allowed things to happen according to His purpose. Let there be of your notes His purpose for our focus. Our focus. God's purpose of conforming us to the Lord Jesus Christ should be our focus. Amen? Amen. We should allow the Lord in what He wants us to do. 
focus on our Lord Jesus Christ and all things will work for good. Amen? We should always remind ourselves that our focus should not be on our achievements. Listen again. We should remind, our, remind ourselves that our focus should not be on our achievements. Should not be on our achievements, but on becoming like Christ. Amen? We should be focusing on our Lord, Jesus Christ. His, first, his purpose in our lives is to, for our faith as well. It is for our faith. Let us say of your Lord. When we, are, when we are putting our trust in God's purpose for our lives, we have no reason to be discouraged. Amen? Amen. We have no reason to be discouraged. Faith is a crucial part of Christian life. Faith is a crucial part of Christian life. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen? But if we have no faith in our God, it's impossible to please Him. So let me just give a review to all the notes for those who are coming late. The number one in your note is people. Is people. Letter A is the truth is not for the unsaved. His promises that God gives is not for the unsaved. And letter B, this truth is not for backslider. Number two in your note is people. Uh, sorry, his promise. His promise. He promised because there is certainty of its outcome. The certainty of its outcome, letter A. The letter B, there's a change in its curriculum. A change in its curriculum. And in letter C, conformity at its goal. Conformity as its goal. Number three is purpose. Letter I of your notes. To filter us, our filter, and let it be our focus. The last one is our faith. Our faith. Let me just read again our verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen? Amen. To them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did for now, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen? Amen? So we have to think of this verses, brothers and sisters. We have to memorize it. Yeah. Or let me just uh, ask everybody to memorize it now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ready, begin. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did for now. Amen. In verse 29. For whom he did for now, he did also did for this day, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Amen. Brother Mike. <laughs> We also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn in among many brethren. Amen. So in our conclusion, it's very fast. God is fully aware of what you are going through. Amen? God is fully aware. Rest assured that God is allowing your trials for his ultimate purpose. 
to conform us to Christ. Amen? God has handpicked every circumstances that we go through. He has a plan that only He can see. And He is working to fulfill that plan in our lives. Amen? He has a plan to fulfill that in our lives. Let me just read in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31. It says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 31, Are not two sparrows sold for a party? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not the poor. Ye are more valued than many sparrows. Amen? We are more valuable than anything else on this earth because He created us. He created on us the bread of life. Amen? And lastly, I will just read in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I have toward you, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen? Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen? Amen? He knows our ending. He knows our ending. Our God knows everything. Amen? Amen. So, praise be to God for this lesson. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, thank you very much, O oh God, for your wonderful work today morning, O oh God. May you bless this word again, O oh God. Continue to bless the, your word to be our focus in our daily lives, O oh God. May you guide us as we live through this word, even so many trials are coming in all our way. We are assured of your goodness, all your blessings that comes our way. Because you are a great God. You are our, our master. And our, you are our father. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, turn to Romans again. Let's, uh, uh, let's try and memorize the verse. I only try, I memorized verse number 38, but it challenges us to memorize both. Ready? Romans 8, 28, and we know already begin. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, even to them who are the called according to His purpose. And then verse number 29, ready, begin. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His dear Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, let's do that again. Ready? Verse number 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay? Uh, I need the men, only men. Ready? Beginning with verse number 28. And we know, saying, And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, even to them who are the called according to oh, sorry. Huh? Am I wrong? Huh? Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Ready? Begin. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Ladies only. Ladies only. Okay, ready? Ladies, begin. For whom? Ladies. 
mas magaling yata ang mga lalaki ha? Our African brothers only, okay? Brothers and sisters, African brothers and sisters, ready? If you are an African, begin. And we know... Okay, our Filipino brothers and sisters, ready? Begin. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His dear Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, let me just uh, put that on the screen. Put that on the screen. Let's. Uh, uh, analyze the verse. And we know, that is the certainty, okay? And we know that all things, what is the word we are trying to emphasize here? Hmm? All, okay? All things. Does that include pleasant things? Passing the board exam, uh, having a new job, being promoted, those things? Okay? Having good health, uh, does that include those? Does that also include sickness? Yes. Being retrenched, being removed from your job? Yes. Being persecuted? Yes. Okay. That's why this is a transforming truth because it will change the way you look at life. Because sometimes we are, we, it's very easy to praise God when things are going well. But when things doesn't, uh, turn the way we want those things to, to be, then we murmur and complain. But if we will only underline this, and we know that all things work together for good. That means whatever happens, it's for your good. Okay? Was it good that uh, Joseph's brother was hated by his brothers? Was it good that he was sold to slavery? Was it good that he was placed in prison? Okay? Was it pleasant? It wasn't pleasant, but it was good. It's like going to the dentist. Brother Ron, you're a dentist, okay? Going to the dentist is not pleasant, but it's good. Can you imagine pulling your teeth? It's not pleasant, but it's good. And we know that all things work together for good. To whom? To them? To everybody? No. To unsaved people? No. Not all things work together for good for unsaved people because if they remain unsaved and they die, they go to hell and burn forever. It's not also all things work together for good for backsliders because, you know, if you're a backslider, pag nagkakasala ka, patuloy ka nagkakasala, you will experience the chastisement of the Lord. You will lose your joy, you will lose your health, you will lose your material possessions, you will lose your loved one, or you will die prematurely. Those are the tools that God employ in chastising us, in chastising backsliders, okay? And we know that all things work, work together for good, to whom? To them that love God. Even to them, no, sorry, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So again, everything happens for your good. Not everybody, not if you are not saved, not if you are a backslider, Everything happens together for you if you love God. Kaya kung mahal mo ang Panginoon, talagang wala ka namang alam na kasalanan sa buhay mo, you're trying to do your very best and love God and serve God, and things happen the way they do. They, maybe somebody hates you, or somebody wants to put you down, or you get sick, or you get laid off from your work. Don't worry. Everything is going to be all right. Amen? Uh, again, we have the story of, uh, of uh, Joseph and uh, so many other stories that we know. Now, do we understand verse number 28? Is it clear? Okay. All things work together for good. The pleasant things, the painful things. The burdens that we bear, they are actually blessings. Okay. Look at verse number 29. Let's have some doctrines here. For whom? Who is this referring to? The word whom? Those who love God. 
You understand? Because there is this doctrine of uh, the doctrine of the devil is going on in many churches. It's called predestination. The word predestination is a Bible doctrine, but it must be interpreted, it must be taught in the light of its context. Do you understand? What does the Bible say? For whom? Sino yung whom dyan na binabanggit? Follow me, follow me. Don't get lost. Sino yung whom na yan? Those believers mentioned in verse number 28. To them that love God. To them, uh, sorry, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Those people who love God and those who are called according to His purpose, the Bible says, for whom He, who is He here? Uh, God. He did for no, that means He already know those people because He is God. Is there anything God doesn't know? None. Does He know everything? Yes, because He's omniscient. If God doesn't know one thing, even a small thing, the, uh, we, have, we have a bigger problem. Do you understand? That's why he has to know everything because he is God. Okay. So he already know those people even before the foundation of the world. Now look at this. He also did what? Predestinate. Who did he predestinate? Unsaved people? No. To whom? Those who are, those who love God, those who are saved, those who are called according to his purpose. He, conf uh, he predestinated them. Look, 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 look here. Predestinated to what, heaven? Heaven, yes or no? Predestinated them to go to hell? No, that's not the doctrine here because some churches teach this uh, doctrine that came from the devil that God has already predestinated some people to go to hell and some to go to heaven. God has chosen those who will go to heaven, and God did not choose you to go to heaven, you go to hell. That's not what the verse is saying. For whom, referring to those saints, those who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. In verse number 28, he did for now, because he is God, he is omniscient, he also did predestinate to what? To be conformed. That is the predestination here. That means, if you love God, you are called according to His purpose, then you are predestined to be conformed to the image of His. So the predestination here is not for unsaved people. Do you understand? Predestination is for saved people. And that predestination is conformity. That means, if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will be conformed to whom? To the image of His Son, what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ? Is He in His glorious body? Is He in heaven? Is He the ear of heaven? Okay, so you will be conformed to that. That means what He has will also be yours. Because we are co-ears of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we following? Okay, so He predestinated us to be conformed to the image of the Son. That He might be the firstborn among uh, among brethren. Can you please show us 2 Corinthians 3 18? Look at this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18. Look at this verse. 2 Corinthians 3 18. But we all, Paul was writing to the believers in Corinth, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. Who is the subject here? The Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. What is this glory here? That means the day you got saved. Until the day God calls you home. That means from glory to glory. That's the time we are being changed. Do you remember when you first got saved? Some of you, you have vices. You smoke cigarette, you drink alcohol, and some of you still do that. And if you are doing that, if you're really a child of God, God will do something. Okay? Uh, so, from glory to glory. So, your life before is a mess. Your life before is a very wicked life. But little by little, you came to church, you start those things, little by little, you are becoming more and more like... You used to curse. You used to curse words. Sa Pilipinas, no? Maglalaro ng basketball. Dulo at uh, 
yung uh, beginning at saka end ng sentence puro mura. Pero pag nasave yan, nagbabago yan. Say, from glory to glory, we are being, uh, what? Saints into the image of His Son. From glory unto glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So I hope we understand what predestination is. Predestination is for people who are saved. They are predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. Okay? That is the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we will become like Him. The Bible says, when we shall see Him, we, like be, we shall be like Him. Do you have that verse? I think that's in 1 John. Can you show us that, Brother Ronald? When we shall see Him, uh, if that not yet appear, what, what we shall be, the Bible says. Okay. Uh, okay, When we shall see Him, we shall be like Him, the Bible says there. Okay. Uh, while waiting for that, let's go to our notes before we, as we wrap up things. Uh, Paul, paki sinya sa choir, magsisimula na tayo. Ito. No, no, no. That's a video testament. When we see him, we shall be like him. Uh, I think uh, that's in first John or something. Okay. Now, so, uh, all things for your good. What's number one? His what? In your blanks. His Give me the word. His? His people. Okay. So, sino ito? Sino tinutukoy dito? Kanino itong promise na ito? First, we learn that this truth is not for people who are not saved. So, if you are here today and you are not saved, get saved. Because the promise of the Lord uh, is very clear. Him that cometh to me, he said, I will in no way cast out. This truth is also not for it's not for Say it loud, please. It's not for. Okay. Are we very vaccinated and we cannot even say the word? It convicts us just the mere fact of saying it. Okay. This truth is not for the backslider. If your relationship with God is not right, this is not for you. Let us say this truth is for those who what? love the Lord. So if you want to claim this verse, you must love the Lord. Letter B, number two, number two. What is the blank in number two? His promise. Titus 1-2, the Bible says, uh, whom God cannot lie. Let's look at this verse now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. How did we become the sons of God? By receiving who? The Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And if that not yet appear, what we shall be? Kung titignan mo, hindi pa tayo ganun. Tignan mo nga si Brother Bert. Tignan mo nga ako. Tignan mo si Brother Mark. Parang hindi pa yan. Hindi pa ganap yan. Hindi pa tapos yan. But we know that when He shall appear, pag, bu pag bumalik ng ating Panginoon, we shall be what? Like Him. Who is Him here? The Lord Jesus Christ. For we shall see Him as He is. See? That's the, that's the predestination conformity to His Son. So the promise, number one is we see the certainty of its outcome. We know what the outcome will be. It's like watching replay in the basketball. If you watch the replay, will you have the same result or different result? Huh? Warriors. My Warriors won game five. Okay? In replay mo yan, sino mananalo during the replay? You play it a hundred times. How many times were the Warriors win? They will win it fine. That means the the outcome is certain. You understand? If you love God, all things will work for your good. That is for sure. That is for certain. No second guessing. Uh, all you have to worry is just love God and everything will be okay. Regardless of uh, like, minsan uh, when people attack us, when people uh, what do what happens to us? We become discouraged, we become frustrated. We even post in Facebook our frustrations because of the way people are treating us. You know, you are announcing your carnality. When you are posting in Facebook your emotions, you are posting your carnality. Because if you love God, don't worry about how people are treating you. Because regardless of what they do to you, you will always come up on top. 
just make sure you love God. The certainty of the outcome and the second is a change in its curriculum. You are living a worldly life before. That's the curriculum. Now there is a change in the curriculum. Your life is now being patterned after the after the word. So it's a different curriculum. It's a different pattern that you are following. And number three, uh, the promise of conformity. That means we will be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just uh, read that verse here. And finally, his purpose. Okay. Number three, his purpose. His purpose must be our what? Must be our, what's letter A? Filter. Ano ibig natin sabihin dyan? Our plans, Brother Philip said, should go through the filter of His purpose. Huwag kang gawa ng gawa ng plano mo. Hindi nung basta-basta, you just make a plan. I do this, I do this, I do this. And you disregard the purpose of God in your life. That means when you make a plan, consider the will of God. Ah, I do this if God's will, if this is the purpose of God. Amen? I'll take this job. I'll marry this person if this is the will of God. Our plan should go through the filter of His Folks, it should go through the filter of His purpose. And let it be His purpose should be our focus. Okay? We should always be thinking that's, that's our target, that's our, that's our aim. His focus and uh, that should also be our faith. One more time, let's recite the verse. Ready? You have three weeks to memorize this. Remember this. Next week, I'll not be here. I, we will be in Kenya, Lord willing. Uh, if you will allow us to go. And, uh, but you will memorize the verse. In three weeks, memorize the verse. Okay, ready? We'll start with verse number 28, Romans 8, 28. And then the service will commence after this. Ready? Begin. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His dear Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay? Now, who will recite? Okay? Okay. Maybe too, too soon to, to prove for somebody to recite, but... Uh, uh, I trust that you will memorize this verse because if you are saved, this verse is for you. And uh, I hope you learn something from the Word of God. Amen? Did you? Amen? I hope you learn something from the Word of God.